Welcome to a new vlog. In this video I'm gonna show you revision 2 of this PIR sensor board that I first built in vlog 240. Although I got it functional in the first revision it lacked a few features and the PCB contained a few errors in the layout so I decided to fix those in a second revision. The board is still based on the ESP32, still uses the SHT30 humidity slash temperature sensor. It's the same uh, AM312 PIR sensor, but uh, there will be a few changes now. For example, I've added battery protection circuit because with this kind of battery slot, there is the possibility of inserting the uh, battery in reverse polarity and that could fry this circuit. I've used the famous DW06 chip, which you see in every cheap power bank these days. I've added pull-up resistors on the I2C lines, because previously I was using the internal pull-ups of the ESP32, but it's good practice to use external pull-ups. I've added a MOSFET circuit to only turn on the battery mod monitoring circuit while taking a measurement. And this way we can save a few microamps when the board slips and that's super important because the board will be sleeping for most of the time so this should increase our battery life i've switched to the smallest digital rgb led you can find which is the 1.5 by 1.5 millimeter package there's no real reason for that there was plenty of room on this board but i just wanted to try those out in a project and uh, i've optimized the coupling capacitor placement as well as the main power tracks routing and size to avoid getting any voltage drops uh, that might cause brownouts when the esp32 boots up and uses a lot of current the layout had to be redone to accommodate all of these uh, uh, sensors but here are the new PCBs they've been uh, manufactured by PCBWay which is the sponsor of this video and I encourage you to check out their website which will be linked in the description below the video. They can manufacture a wide variety of board specs and for this one I opted for this uh, green matte solder mask with gold finish and they look superb I really like this uh, matte green solder mask and um, I haven't seen this type of solder mask being provided with other manufacturers I also got a uh, steel stencil because I have small SMD parts in here and it makes assembly so much easier as for the assembly of these boards, you can go the classical way of using solder paste applying it with the help of the stencil then placing all of the components on the board with a pair of tweezers and at the end reflow with a hot plate or hot air, whatever you have available. Or you can go with a more modern approach, one that I've been using lately. You get one of these magical assembly boxes. So what you need to do is open the box, place all of the uh, components inside throw in a PCB, don't forget about the solder paste, close the box, you need to maybe let it work its magic for about two to three minutes, maybe slowly stir it occasionally, and when it's done, you should be able to open the box and have the board ready assembled. And that's pretty awesome, right? Now it's time to modify the firmware I wrote last time and adjust it for the latest pin mappings and everything should be working fine. I've uh, added this debug function that will test everything present on this board. For example, it will flash the RGB LED, it will uh, read the temperature slash humidity data and send it over serial, it will read the uh, PIR sensor status as well as battery voltage and send those over as, uh, on serial as well. And here is an example of the serial output the board will produce. As you can see, all of the values are there. One thing I'm curious to see is how much energy do we save with the uh, MOSFET circuit for the battery monitoring circuit. Simple math tells us that we have the battery voltage, let's say a uh, full battery at 4.2 volts and uh, a 37K resistor connected across when the MOSFET is on. So we should have a current of uh, 113 microamps wasted on the resistor divider. Now with the MOSFET off, we would uh, only have the MOSFET leakage current, but that should be uh, in the one microamp range. So we should in theory save about 112 microamps. 
I did some measurements with the joule scope and I captured the current consumption of the ESP32 in deep sleep with uh, all the other circuitry uh, disabled and uh, without the resistor divider active I measured about 12 microamps while with the divider active I measured 126 microamps. Now 126 minus 12 equals 114 microamps which is pretty close to the value we estimated earlier and I would say this is a considerable saving in deep sleep mode. I'm pretty happy with uh, how this circuit ended up. You might also be interested in how much power do the uh, different sections of the circuit use. So remember we had 12 microamps for the ESP32. This is a screenshot with the temperature slash humidity sensor connected but idle. So it doesn't add much, maybe a few hundred nanoamps to the overall consumption, certainly negligible. And this is after connecting the PIR sensor, this adds another 9 to 10 microamps while idle. That's not bad at all, but here is a capture of the current waveform when I connect the RGB LED, which is idle. It adds a whopping 236 microamps to the total. So it might be worth adding a MOSFET and cutting power to the RGB LED while in sleep or just not populating the RGB LED at all because that's gonna hurt battery life in standby. In my case, I'm just going to leave uh, its uh, jumper uh, disconnected. So my total sleep current will be something like uh, 21 or 22 microamps. From the PCB layout phase, I've added a bunch of these uh, solder jumpers on the power lines of various sections of the circuit. So if I wanted to disconnect uh, the sensor or the LED, I can do that physically through these uh, jumpers placed on their VCC lines. And then I'll know the uh, remaining, remaining current consumption of the board uh, is uh, not including those parts. This is a technique you can use in the first revisions of a particular circuit you're building to allow you to check the amount of power usage in different sections of a circuit. You might also notice the uh, PIR sensor is offset to the left side of the board and that is on purpose because I would like to eventually design and 3D print an enclosure for this. And since the antenna of the ESP32 uh, is hanging out on the left side, I had to move the PIR sensor to the left in order for it to be sender because uh, I'm going to be eventually building an enclosure for this and so the total space occupied by the PCB plus the antenna hanging out uh, will give me the outer perimeter and the sensor needs to be centered to that not to the actual center of the PCB. So pretty much up to this point I can say the hardware is validated and I am releasing both the hardware and the software as open source. There will be a download link in the description below. Feel free to build your own, modify to whatever you want. I think next I'll design and 3D print an enclosure for this, but uh, that will be another video. I would really appreciate your feedback on this circuit. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this kind of videos. Maybe support the channel on Patreon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with a new video.